Hey everyone, good evening. I am Pranav Bhosti and I am currently working as a software engineer one in Kikians. So it's great to be here today to talk about something that's a crucial part of any mobile application, that is integrating a payment gateway. Specifically, we will be diving into Cash Free, that is a widely used payment solution in India. Now imagine you have built a fantastic e-commerce app, a food delivery platform, or even a subscription-based service. The app is sleek, the UI is great. But there is one major roadblock that is handling payments smoothly and securely. That's where Cashfree comes in. Today I will guide you through every step of integrating Cashfree into a React Native application. We will cover installation, configuration, handling transactions, and best practices to ensure a seamless payment experience for users. By the end of this session, you will have a clear roadmap to implement Cashfree payments in your own application. Whether you are new to payment gateways or have experience with other solutions, this talk will help you understand how to make transactions secure, efficient, and user-friendly. So let's dive in. Before jumping into the implementation, let's take a moment to understand why we are using Cashfree in the first place. There are many payment gateways available like Paytm, Razorpay, Stripey, etc. So why Cashfree? First, that it supports UPI, net banking, wallets, and card payments, making it a versatile choice. Second is its fast settlement time. So compared to competitors, Cashfree offers one of the quickest fund settlement times, which is critical for businesses. Third is that it follows PCI DSS compliance, meaning that your transactions will remain safe and protected. And fourth is its easy integration, as it comes with a well-documented SDK for React Native or for any other platform, making it development smoother. So. Before we start coding, we need to make sure that we have everything in place. So first, we need to create a Cashfree account, and we need to obtain the X client ID and X client secret API keys for the authentication purpose. So this is the dashboard that will appear when you log in into the Cashfree accounts. So basically, this is the overview of uh, your uh, transactions. So let's say if I select last seven days, so you will be able to see all the transactions amount and how many transactions you have done. And here we can see the analytics also. So let's say if I choose this week, so we can see the analytics that what payments were done using, uh, or like how many payments were done using net banking or UPI. So here we will be seeing all the payments that we have done. Here we can see all the orders. And uh, so the main thing that we need to go here in the developer section, then we need to click on the API keys and we need to generate using this. CTA. So basically, we have to like obtain these two keys that is the client X client ID and the X secret key. So this will be useful in creating the orders and setting up the payment gateway. So the next thing is we need to set up a React Native Expo project and we need to just configure some schemes in the info.plist file. And the third part is we need to integrate the Cashfree SDK. So moving on to the next step, once our Expo setup is ready, we just need to uh, install the Cashfree SDK using uh, npm or this tian install react native Cashfree pg SDK and so the order part should be done from the backend only but here we are doing in the front end itself just to showcase how it will work so let's directly dive into the code so before diving into the order creation process I would like to highlight that the entire implementation is based on Cashfree's official documentation ensuring accuracy and best practices so here is the official documentation of cash free payments that I am uh, following in this particular video. And the first step is to set up the SDK. So for setting up the SDK, we just need to install the package React Native Cash Free PG SDK in our Expo application. And the next step is to add the particular scheme into the info.plist file under the iOS directory. So basically to run our application in both Android and iOS, we just need to install or basically we just need to run four commands that is appearing on the screen above and after running these uh, four commands you will be able to run the application in both in android and ios and you will be able to view the directories of android and ios in the application so basically you just need to uh, select ios here in the directory and you just just need to go to the project name under the project name you will see info.plist file so here in this file you just need to add the particular scheme that Cashway is suggesting to add. 
So basically these entries in the info.plist file are required for enabling the deep linking to UPI payment applications in your iOS application. So for that, after adding the, the scheme in info.plist file, you just need to go to iOS directory and you just need to install the pods. So if you don't want to uh, install the pods by running the command or if you don't want to add uh, manually in uh, the info.plist file, the thing that you can do is that you can go to app.json and under iOS you can add the uh, scheme here. So this will automatically add the this particular scheme into the infrared playlist file under the iOS directory. So that's it for uh, the iOS part. So now let's start with the code walkthrough. So first we are just importing all the dependencies that is required for the order creation. And uh, the next step is to declare the variable client id and client secret where we basically retrieve the client id and the client secret from the environment variables this ensures that the sensitive keys are not hard coded in the app to improve security now since we are using typescript we define interfaces to strictly type the data structure so here customer details basically holds the customer information the order details interface basically contains both customer details and the order related information so here cache free response is basically used to define the expected response from the api so next part is where we are basically initializing the component state so here order details basically holds the user's input such as customer id customer phone number order id order amount and order currency which is basically in inr and basically set order details basically updates the state whenever the input field changes and loading here is used to control the activity indicator during the API request and router is basically used to enable the navigation to another screen after a successful order creation so moving on to the next uh, part so we are basically uh, we are declaring a function named as handle change and it is basically for the form input so this function basically updates the order details when the user types into an input field and let's say if the field is uh, belonging to the customer details it will basically update only that part of the state so basically this whole function will ensure controlled inputs for better data handling and it will avoid unnecessary re-renders so the next part is basically creating a order using the cache free api so basically here cache free is basically providing some apis for creating an order so this api just to sum up the whole uh, basically documentation I have basically created a postman request here. So basically these uh, these five details are required for basically uh, creating an order. These are the, like mandatory details that we need to provide in the body. So let's say that I have I'm providing customer ID like this. The phone number is basically this and the order ID is basically this one. So and the order amount is 100 rupees. So basically if I send we will be able to see a response in which the main thing is the payment session id basically cf order id so let's see in the code too so here basically set loading true we are doing because just to show the activity indicator while processing the request and uh, basically we are uh, basically here fetch basically just uh, sends a post request to the cache free api to create an order and basically api keys that are uh, passed in the headers for the authentication purpose here and the body will be just containing the order details that will be converted into the JSON format. And this function will trigger the actual payment process by sending the order details to the cache free server. And let's say if the API response is not okay, then we log the error and we will be able we will be just able to see the exception or the error. And if if the response is successful, then we will be able to extract the response and print it to the console just for the debugging purpose here. And the next part is basically after the successful order creation we will be just redirecting to the payments page and we will be just passing some data that is order id cf order id that is cash free order id and payment session id and the order status and here we are just uh, doing the error handling part and if we go here in the handle payment function it's just that we need to fill all the required details and we just we are just calling the create order function and yeah this is just normal styling and let me just uh, give you a brief walkthrough on the ui part of the application so this is the order screen and let's say if i am typing some customer details let's say this and number 
let's say this number and I am specifying that the order ID here is like this and let's say the order amount is 800 rupees so if I uh, just click the proceed to pay CDA then it will create the order and it will take me to the payment page and upon clicking proceed to payment we will be able to see the cash freeze SDK now let's say I am like creating the same customer uh, and uh, the same phone number and let's say I am specifying the same ID so what will happen that it will throw me the error that okay let's say here we are specifying same order ID so it will throw me the error that order with same ID is already present and so what we need to do is that we just need to create a unique order ID every time so let's say order underscore 2 is the unique so it will take me to the payment page so yeah this is the uh, basic part of the order creation process now since we are completed with the order creation part let's now move to the implementation of the payment screen so basically first we extract the order id and payment session id from the url parameters and configure the theme for a customized checkout experience and the next step we will be handling the payment flow in which first step is to handle the payment callbacks second is to handle different payment modes and third is to hand start the payment process let's now understand this with the help of code so here first basically we are importing all the dependencies where the CF payment gateway service is basically uh, helping us to initialize the payment sessions configure themes and specify payment methods so basically these all imports set up everything that we need for initiating and handling the payments so let's now start with the implementation where we first retrieve the order id and the payment session id from the previous screen where the order was created these values are crucial for linking the payment session with the correct order next is that we have to use the cm theme builder to customize the payment ui with the specific color scheme customizing the ui basically ensures that the payment screen blends well with the app's branding next we will basically declare a function named as const handle payment callbacks where we are using use callback just to optimize the function to provide unnecessary re-enters and then we are using a method that is that comes from ca payment gateway service that is set callback and set callback defines two handlers on verify and on error now on verify basically displays an alert on successful payment along with the order id and in on error it will basically display an alert showing the error message if the payment fails and basically here remove callback just cleans up the event listeners when the component is unmounted so next we will start the payment in which basically uh, we will first uh, create a payment session with the payment session id order id and we just need to specify the environment currently we are using testing environment so we need to write sandbox if we are using production environment then we have to write production instead of sandbox and then we just need to configure some payment methods in which basically we will be using cf payment component builder in which we will be adding the payment modes like card upi wallet paypal and net banking emi and pay later options and then we just need to initialize the drop checkout payment where basically drop checkout payment combine the session payment modes and the theme and then we just need to uh, call the do payment method and in parameter we will write drop uh, drop checkout payment so what it will do that it will just launch the cash free payment screen and then in the use effect we will just run the handle payment callbacks when the component mounts to just ensure that the payment results are handled properly and in dependencies we are just using handle payment callback just to prevent the unnecessary reruns and here it's just the normal uh, ui this just the normal uh, proceed to payment cta which will just take us to the cash free sdk so now let let us just see uh, in the ui so here since the order was already created now if i click on proceed to payment it will just uh, take me to the uh, like the cash free sdk and here we can see card the upi wallet in which we will be able to see the number that we have already provided and net banking in which we can see uh, there are many banks and uh, then there is a pay later option so let's say if i am using sbi so here since it is the testing environment it already gives us the otp that is triple one triple zero and let's say i want to see the fail status so there are many types of the uh, there are many types for the failure so let's say i have used incorrect pin and i submit so it will show me payment fail that we have 
done in the error handling part and let's say if we are going uh, for the success part let's say i'm uh, again i'm going for sbi so basically here let's say i just write the otp and i just let success so on submitting it will just show me payment success with the order id so basically this is the uh, implementation of the payment gateway and let's say the payment is done and then again we click on proceed to payment it will show payment success again since already the payment is done the same we can uh, do with the help of api also here i have uh, like created a postman request so let's say the order that we created earlier we just uh, take the payment session id from here and let's just uh, copy paste the id here in this here we are specifying the upi only for the uk payment and we are providing the channel as link so we will be just we will just get some link regarding that so so here we are having link for bim default gpay paytm phone pay and web so let's say if i click here so it will just take me to the payment page and now since we are completed with the integration of payment gateway so let's now discuss brief about coupons so coupons are a great way to boost customer engagement and increase conversions by providing discounts at checkout with cash free generating coupons is simple and efficient for instance you can create a coupon like a name welcome 100 that offers a rupees 100 discount on a minimum order of rupees 500 and let's say it is valid until December 31st, 2025. So this will help in encouraging repeat purchases, improving checkout completion rates and enabling targeted marketing strategies. By integrating the cash free API, businesses can seamlessly create and manage coupons, enhancing the overall shopping experience. Let's now see how we could create an offer using cash free API. So here in the developer's guide, we have one API for creating the offer. So to sum up this whole documentation, I have created a Postman request for the create offer API. So basically here we need to provide the offer meta, offer terms and condition, offer details and offer validations. Where in offer meta, we need to provide the title, description, code name, start time and the end time. And in terms and condition, we need to specify the type and the value. And in offer details, we need to mention that which type of offer it is. Like here I have used discount and cashback where discount type is percentage and the discount value is 10% with the amount specified and same goes for cashback where cashback type is percentage cashback value is 10 and the maximum cashback amount is also 10 and in offer validations the minimum amount on which the offer can be applied will be 15 and the maximum value will be 100 rupees and the payment method is all here so like we can uh, do the payment by any mode like UPI, net banking, EMI or anything so it will generate a response like this where we will get the offer id and here we are able to see active status so now we will just use this offer id and we will copy and paste the offer id here in the payment sessions so here i have used the payment method to be upi and the channel i have used is link so it will basically generate some links for uh, like bim upi default gpay paytm phone pay and web so if we click on link we will be redirected here so like this is the webhook basically so that's why it is uh, taking us to the website and let's say if I let's say uh, provide the OTP so it will just show that the payment is successful here I haven't uh, used the offer that's why it's showing 100 rupees only if let's say I have used and I've just sent the um, post request with the offer ID then it would have showed something like 90 rupees so let's say there are some uh, sandbox environment testing variables also like for like if let's say if we go and we write the channel here to be collect so we will just go and we have to specify the UPI ID and here are the test credentials like test success at the rate go cash for the success remark failure for the failed remark and invalid for the invalid mark so through this we can integrate the uh, offers API and to know more about APIs and webhooks you can follow this documentation and yeah so like that's it for this talk so thank you for your valuable time thank you